Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to take a look at using OpenSSL to create a certificate authority and then using that certificate authority to create a signed host certificate. So this can be useful for several situations. One of them is just development where you just need a certificate authority and maybe a few host certificates to use for testing. But it's also useful for maybe production environments if you want some sort of internal PKI that you don't need to be globally trusted, so you don't want to go out and pay for a certificate and you don't need to, then having this skill is potentially pretty useful. And it doesn't require, for instance, um, Active Directory certificate services. You can do it with OpenSSL for free. So let's take a look at how to do this. First thing I want to point out is that I have these notes up on our GitHub page. So if you want to re uh, sort of refer back to them when you're doing these, these activities, you can do that. So I've got a single document here for ECDSA and then a sort of a matching document for RSA, depending on which type of, of asymmetric cryptography you'd like to use. In this video, we're going to demonstrate ECDSA, but I did put both up because people have their preferences. So we're going to, in this video, make a certificate authority and then we will make a single host certificate and sign it using that certificate authority so the first step we have to do when we're using asymmetric crypto or in this case not asymmetric crypto but specifically elliptic curve cryptography is we have to pick which curve we want to use so let me kind of rearrange the screens here like thus and let's uh, let's begin demonstrating this. I'm on Linux. This will work. These commands will work exactly the same on Mac OS. On Windows, there might be a little bit of wonkiness with the command line, so you might have to like quote certain things that you wouldn't otherwise have to quote. Uh, I'm not sure, but I have gotten this to work on PowerShell. It just required a little bit more finessing. But we're going to demonstrate this on Linux. This is just a some virtual machine running in the cloud somewhere. So let's uh, let's start this up. First thing we want to do when we're creating a certificate authority with elliptic curve cryptography is we want to see what curves we have available to us. And the way to do that, you can run OpenSSL EC param and then dash list underscore curves. And then on Unix platforms, you can actually pipe that into less. So it doesn't just spit out this huge list at you at once, right? So you can actually kind of poke through it. So when we do this, notice that there are a lot of options here. So lots of different curves have been defined, but the one that we're interested in, let's see if we can find it here. Maybe if we go back up, is prime 256 V1. Yeah, right here. So prime 256 V1 is what we're going to use. It's kind of widely supported across most browsers, basically every browser. So that's one reason to use it. There are plenty of other options, but of course you'd have to sort of do your research as to which one applies to you. There is absolutely a, a security versus performance uh, trade-off that you have to make. And I think that Prime 256 V1 is kind of one of the, the sort of curves that is in the sweet spot, right? Is in the, uh, the middle ground. So we are going to use Prime 256 V1. And first thing we have to do for our certificate authority is just generate a private key. So for an elliptic curve, private key. We are going to use EC param again, and then we're going to use the flag or yeah, flag, I guess, gen key to generate a key. And we have to tell it what elliptic curve we want to use, which is prime 256v1. And then we have to tell it where to output that key to. So if we do out ca.key, it should now be right here in our local directory. So ca.key, and if we print that out using cat, here is our elliptic key, our elliptic curve key. So we can see our EC parameters as well as the private key here. All right, so that's the first step. And now we have to take that key and use it to make a self-signed certificate. So I'm gonna scroll down here because OpenSSL, one thing about it, the command line syntax can be pretty involved and it's very picky. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to be referring to my own notes as I go through this but we'll, uh, we'll try to explain some of these flags as we go through. So again, open SSL, but this time we're going to make a cell sign certificate. And to do that, we say rec, but then we say X509. So the dash X509 here says, don't output a certificate signing request. Actually just output a self-signed certificate. 
So in the case of a host, we'd want a CSR, a certificate signing request that we'd then give to the CA. But because we are making the CA, we have no CA to send a CSR to. So at some point, you know, in the PKI hierarchy, we have to have a self-signed certificate somewhere. So that's what we're doing now. We're going to make a sort of a request, but we're really not outputting a request. We're just going to make a self-signed certificate for the certificate authority. So long story short, the dash X509 here just says make a self-signed certificate. Don't make a signing request. Okay, so we say dash X509, and this is gonna be new and we can specify a hashing algorithm that we wanna use. I'm just going to use SHA-256. There's plenty of options. You can use SHA-384, 512, but we're going to use SHA-256. I'm gonna say no DES. So that means we're not going to encrypt any private keys uh, if applicable. Maybe not the best option to use in production. You probably do want to have those keys encrypted and password protected, but for a demo, we're just going to leave it unencrypted. So no DES, and then we specify the key that we want to use, which is CA.key. We want to then specify the validity period of the certificate. So because this is a CA, we can kind of use a longer validity period than we would for hosts, because especially with CAs, you don't want to be constantly turning over those certificates. So 10 years is what we'll do, 365 times 10. And then we're going to say, output this to CA.cert. And finally, if you want to, if you just ran that command as is, it would start prompting you for like the, the country and the state and the locality and so on and so forth. Alternatively, if you want to just get this done in one command, you could use the dash subject, well, subj, uh, which means subject, and you could specify this in the command line. So that's what we'll do. And we're going to say the country is the United States, the state, in my case is Arizona. The locality, in my case, is gonna be Tempe. And then my canonical name for the CA, we'll just say ca.demo. Let me just double check that I'm getting the syntax right here. Oh yeah, we want to add an organization probably. So we could say O is SW for Stormwind. I think I've got that syntax right, so let's run it. Could not load root dot Ooh, that's not, uh, that's not promising. So, okay, X509, keys, ca.key. Okay, very much not promising. So let's do some troubleshooting here. Otherwise, I might have to kind of come back to this video. Okay. Okay, so let's see if we can do this. Uh, uh, what would it be? V Etsy slash open slash SSL maybe? Slash open SSL.conf. And let's just delete the RAN file here. So what that, I think this will work, but basically there was some sort of misconfiguration in the, the configuration file here on Linux. So what I did was I went into the configuration file for OpenSSL and deleted it. So you can tell this is the first time I've actually used this particular server and hopefully that will work, but let's see. It does. So if you ever run into that random error that I've never seen before, you can uh, go into the OpenSSL configuration file and uh, delete that RAND file entry. So it's kind of weird, never seen that before but luckily Google saves the day as usual. So back to, uh, back to our regular, regularly scheduled programming. If we do an LS here, we now have a certificate. And if we cat out the certificate, there's our certificate, that's our CA certificate. So now we have to actually, we've got our CA set up, but we have to make a host certificate. And the steps are kind of similar, but they, they do differ. So we will basically run the same command that we did for the certificate authority to make the private key. So it's gonna be openSSL ecparam dash gen key dash name prime prime 256 v1. And the output will be in this case host.key. And if we do a cat, 
not a cart, but a cat of host.key. All right, we've got our, our host key now. So we'll clear the screen, and now we're going to run a slightly different command. So previously, when we used this ret command for the certificate authority, we used the dash x509 to tell it that we wanted to make a self-signed certificate. But for this, we don't want to do that. We want to make a certificate signing request. So we're going to say rec new SHA-256. The key is our host's key, so host.key. We're going to say no DES once again. And we want to output it to host.csr, so the certificate signing request. And once again, we want to provide it with maybe that subject information instead of having to do it interactively. So forward slash C for the country is the US, state is Arizona, the locality is going to be Tempe, the organization will be Stormwind or just SW. And then our canonical name will be, or common name, I guess, will be host.demo. Uh, All right, so that's that. And if we do an LS, it's there. If we cat out the certificate sign request, notice in the header here, it says begin certificate request. So that gets us most of the way there, but we then have to turn off caps lock, clear the screen. And then we have to actually take that CSR and feed it into the certificate authority to get a signed certificate out. So the way we can do that is open SSL X509. Notice that this is not dash X509. This is just X509. So this is where open SSL can get kind of weird. Sometimes a command requires a dash, sometimes it doesn't. And that's why I, I decided to make this video because it, it can get very confusing and having just a set of notes like this hopefully will be a little helpful. But in this case, it's x509 dash request. We're going to use SHA 256. We can specify the days. So for this host certificate, maybe two years roughly. And the input file is going to be our certificate sign request. We have to tell it our what uh, certificate the certificate authority is using. So it's ca.cert. And then our CA key, which is what's going to be used for actually signing the, uh, the certificate when we make it. And one kind of warning, capitalization does matter. So key is lowercase here. And it's just going to be CA.key and CA create serial. So it will create a serial number. And then we want to output this as host.cert. So let's see, will this work? Yeah, it looks like it did. So let's, uh, again, cat that out. So we'll say host.cert. And there we go. We've got our, our certificate for this host that has been signed by a certificate authority. So what you could do is take the certificate authority's certificate and install it on the machines that you want to trust the certificates that it signs, right? So if you install the certificate authority certificate, it will sort of by default, you know, trust this particular certificate or any other certificate that is signed by that CA. So that can make it, that can be kind of nice, especially in development environments. One last thing that I want to point out though, if we scroll down just a bit more, uh, if we cut out the, the host's private key, this format sometimes isn't going to play well. So say you're spinning up a web server. So this is something that I ran into recently when I was using I think it was Actix. It's like a Rust framework for for web servers. And I was trying to load the the private key onto a web server, but it wasn't taking the private key in this format, uh, the the particular uh, crate that I was using to 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 implement cryptography. Didn't like this format. So what you can do if you run into any sort of issues with your your private key for the host is you can actually convert it into a different format. So in this case, we're going to use PKCS8. We're going to say 2 PKCS8, basically, 2 PK8. And we're going to input the host key. And we'll output you know, host maybe an underscore PKCS8.key. So this is a private key file still. It's just in a different format. And we'll say no crypt. I'm not sure if it would even prompt us to encrypt it, but 
just to be safe. Let's just do that. Now, if we do an LS, we've now got a host key and a host PKCS8 key. And if we cat those out, yeah, we'll do host. Yeah, we'll just do each of them sequentially. Host key, host P PKCS8 key. So this is the host key. Uh, this is the format that it sort of starts with, where it's got the EC parameters and then the EC private key. But again, some servers won't like that private key format. So if you run into an issue, if it throws an error, then you can convert it into PKCSA, which is really just taking the elliptic curve private key by itself. Notice that this is all the same here, or it looks like it's encoded differently possibly, but it's taking that private key and basically uh, chopping off the EC parameters and kind of changing the header here. And in doing so, it, uh, it may be more compatible with certain, uh, with certain bits of software. So you may want to do that, or at least uh, be aware that that's an option. So what we did here, we made a CA using elliptic key cryptography, using a particular curve. Then we, using that CA, and a certificate signing request that we generated separately from that, we created this signed certificate for a host. And you could do this as many times as you want uh, for these host certificates. As long as the systems that you're interested in have the CA certificate installed, the host certificates that are signed by it will be trusted. So it is a little bit in depth, but that's why I, I basically made these these cheat sheets. And I'm going to continue to add to this little open SSL notes repository with items like this, as well as with maybe notes on compiling OpenSSL with less features, with only secure uh, options for cryptography, things like that. But yeah, this is the ecdsa.md file. And alternatively, if you want to do RSA encryption, you can come to the RSA file. And it's just a slightly different syntax, very similar, just with a few variations. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, hopefully the syntax didn't uh, completely scare you off because OpenSSL is really great. It's the backbone of the internet and internet security. So it's good to know how to actually interact with it at the command line. That said, it can be a bit of a bear. The syntax can absolutely be a bit difficult and unintuitive and just very verbose. So hopefully again, hopefully these notes are helpful. So thanks for joining me and I will see you in the next video.